Hello, folks. Pardon me if I'm a little slower than usual. This is a, a very weird setup. A very, very weird setup. Uh, I've had to change my primary monitor around. I've had to fiddle around with all kinds of stuff. Uh, This is not real- this doesn't feel sustainable, but I'm hoping that it will work out. Uh... Eventually watching the wrong screen- that too. I don't know, this does, this feels very weird. And very unnatural to me. But if it works, then it is... a powerful tool for streaming older games, potentially. I hope. Uh, so I am Zoe for KQ from Loggington. I am. Uh, I stream video games. And I. I am here to stream Nancy Drew. Let's hope that it works. I think it will. I think it will. I hope it will. But yeah, video games, folks. Uh, I, I play them. And I'm here to play this one. This is a series that's very near to my heart. I... I love the games. I've in, I in fact played this one... Many years ago and blogged the entire thing. If you've read that, then do not spoil anything, please, or I will kill you. Uh... Particularly don't spoil it to me, because I don't remember a damn thing about this game. I remember a little bit of it. I remember the resolution. I remember, uh... Obviously the resolution is 640 by 480. Waiting for me to start doing Nancy Drew games? Eh. Honestly, uh... They're not as cool as I make them sound. I know I make them sound cool, but I end up, uh, stuck a lot. And it takes me hours to get through the puzzles. So this is just gonna be, you know, a, another adventure game where I get stuck a lot. Except that, in this case, I'm getting stuck on puzzles meant for 12-year-old girls. So, you know, not really a change from what I usually do now, is it? That said, I think these games are great. I genuinely love them. I have played and loved them uh, since a relatively young age, and I don't know. Uh, I, I like the books. I just like Nancy Drew. Go figure. I am a fan of detectiving, and Nancy is one of the OG detectives. In my opinion, she's at least as important as Sherlock Holmes. And she has a better friends group. Incoming Jade, I'm not surprised. I am not really surprised. Uh, but yeah, I'm really excited for this. Raid. Hello, Raiders, like both of you. Good to see you. I'm just talking about the fact that I think Nancy Drew is at least as important as Sherlock Holmes, and I think she has a better friends group. That may be controversial, but, you know, I don't care. <laughs> um, but yeah, it took a lot to get this to run, and I am really hoping that it doesn't crash. Uh, in testing, this w the way I'm doing it is the only method I've found that doesn't crash the game reliably. So, here's hoping. Oh, uh, thank you for the gift sub to Rat Sprite. Like, I don't... You know, I don't have any kind of notification for, uh, gift subs. I have a notification for regular subs. Not gift subs. 
Well, all right. Okay. I am going to, when I do, when I alt tab over, I'm going to have to alt tab back because everything kind of shifts two or three feet to the left. And I have to move it all back over so I can see it. So I'm going to, I'm going to shift over here. And then I'm going to come back over and I'm going to move the chat down. And let me just make sure that this. Uh, so this game uh, is roughly the 13th of the Nancy Drew games. But I picked this one to start with. I love this tune. This is the official Nancy Drew theme to me. Uh, I picked this one because it takes place in the 1930s. It is chronologically the earliest of Nancy's adventures. All of her other games take place in the modern day. And, uh, in my opinion, it's the same Nancy. They say that this is, like, an alternate universe. It's based on her first book. Well, it's really based on, like, four of her first books, but we'll get into that later. Uh, this is based on Secret of the Old Clock and several other books. But it takes place in the 1930s. And... In my opinion, it's the same Nancy in the modern day. She just lives forever. She is an eternal detective. As for the rest of it, the game itself will set us up, so... Welcome to my latest case, The Secret of the Old Clock. To start, choose Junior or Senior Detective. If you're new to adventure games or need some help, click on Tutorials. The voice of Alani Manella. Uh, I usually play on Senior Detective. I'm very tempted to play on Junior Detective for the stream because... Uh, there's more hint dialogue, and there's more, there's easier puzzles. But, I think I'm a senior detective at heart, I can't help it. Good. Good. So, we're gonna go senior detective. Someday I have to show you guys the tutorial. It has some iconic dialogue. No, that was not Rouge. The year, 1930. The place, the road to Titusville where we find Nancy Drew behind the wheel of her blue roadster, pondering this question. Why did Emily Crandall, a girl whom Nancy knows only through their mutual friend, Helen Corning, ask Nancy to drive all the way out to the Lilac Inn to see her? Does it have something to do with the fact that Emily's mother died barely a month earlier, leaving Emily to run the restaurant with only her guardian to help her? And more important, why, when she called, did Emily sound so desperate? The spunky teenager turns off the main road, blissfully unaware that Emily isn't all that awaits her at the end of the driveway. No, Nancy Drew is about to get her first taste of the mystery, intrigue, and adventure that are to become her destiny. That is all you need to know about Nancy Drew in like three paragraphs. Somebody needs help, so they called her. She is a spunky teenager. There is mystery, intrigue, and adventure. Here we are. This is the Nancy Drew interface. We've got the menu. We've got acquired items, which we should always look over. Uh, the Titusville roadmap. Boy, have we got gas for you! Nancy's notebook always tells you uh, everything you need to know, including... Usually, if you're on Junior Detective, you get a checklist of stuff to do. But because we're Senior Detectives, we don't need a task list. That is a bold-faced lie. I will be keeping our own task list. Uh, we also have $3.30, which is a lot of money in the 1930s. Let's head on into the Lilac Inn. I love these 
chunky, chunky graphics, man. They're beautiful. Look at this stained glass window. And you guys are getting the authentic 640 by 480 resolution. Now that's what my TV has been forced to running in. I don't think it likes it. Well, hello. I'll bet my bloomers you're Nancy Drew. Well, off with your ender things then, man. We're off to a roaring start. Uh, we, you always get, like, two conversational choices, and they very rarely change anything. Well, you always get at least two, but... Are you Emily's guardian, or Emily told me your name? It's... Let's pretend we're competent. Emily told me your name. It's... I'm Jane Willoughby. I'm Emily's guardian, but only for the next three months until she turns 18. Then she's on her own. Mmm, it smells like someone's been baking pies. Pies are the lilac in specialty. We get orders from all over. Oh, that reminds me your father called. You're supposed to call him. You can use the coin phone on the porch. Emily didn't say anything about you coming until just this morning. She didn't? Don't get me wrong, she can invite anybody here she wants. It's just that she's gotten so darn forgetful lately. I love this. I love how Nancy Drew NPCs have like six poses and they cycle between them more or less at random. I also love this woman's accent, which I have no idea where the fuck she's from, but it's beautiful wherever it is. Uh, let's see, is Emily all right? Or maybe she's just, you know, still thinking about her dead mom. Uh, I think tact had been invented in the 1930s. Is she all right? Well, now that's hard to say. She misses her mom, that's for sure. So do I. Gloria and me, we were best friends, you know? The two of us ran this swell little dress shop over in Capital City. But then she got hitched and I didn't. And the next thing I know, she's writing me saying it would sure take a load off her mind if I could take care of her little girl should something ever happen to her. Like Midwest Austrian. It's like if New York were located in Minnesota. Like, <laughs> if New York were the capital of Minnesota somehow. Uh, Emily's father, or it was nice of you to say yes. Yeah, let's talk about, about Emily's father. Is he in the picture? Emily's father... Died in the war. Cantigny, I think. Anyway, I couldn't say no. I mean, what are best friends for? I just wish I knew how to help Emily. Oh, he's dead. Anyway. Okay. Well, that was brisk. Uh, I wish I knew how to help Emily or help her do what? You make it sound like she's in some kind of trouble. You make it sound like she's in some kind of trouble. She's been acting so... Look, go talk to her. She probably just needs to spend some time with a bear cat like you instead of some dumb Dora like me. Go on up. She's in her room. Just make like a Boy Scout and be prepared. A bear cat? A bear cat? Uh, that's one of those made-up animals, like uh, otter snakes or foxes. They don't really exist. I'm sure. Uh, by moving the cursor to either side of the screen, you can turn around. Very, very slowly. Um. This is what caused trouble before, because if I ever moved my cursor off the left side of the screen, the game would immediately crash. You can imagine how hard it is not to do that when this is one of your primary means of getting around. Anyway, she mentioned that Dad wanted us to call. Let's go back out and hop on the phone. Oh yeah, the phone. Drop a nickel into the slot, please. Drop a nickel there into the go. slot. Now, how may I be of service? Uh, talk to Carson Drew. K L five seven one seven one four one eight seven. I'd like to talk to Carson Drew. His number is K L five seven one eight seven. Hang on a minute. Carson Drew speaking. Hi, Dad. Well, I see you got to Titusville, okay. Uh, did that cut off for you guys, too? I have been having some mild sound issues, and that is bothersome. Oh, well. Uh, got your message. Something wrong? I got your message. Is something wrong? 
No, everything's fine. I need to get some documents from a colleague over there. Um, I thought since we're in the area, you could pick them up, save him paying postage. Sure. Are you guys hearing? He said he'd just leave them for you at the Speech? telegraph office. Just drive into town and look for Tubby Telegrams. He said you can't miss it. Will do. These papers are extremely important, Nancy. I okay. will pick them up, Dad. Good. Remember, watch your gas gauge and get gas when you're low so you don't run out. And try to avoid potholes. The more you hit, the likely it is you'll wind mm. up with a flat. Yes, Dad. And if you do get a flat, take it off and put on your spare. And then head straight to a gas station and get it fixed. Yes, Dad. All right, lecture over. Have you found out why Miss Crandall... Well, my sound just cut out completely. <laughs> I have no sound at all. Oh, that's, uh, concerning. I wanted to call you first. You've done your daughterly duty. Now go see Emily. And after that... I know. Just a I moment know. and I will try to reboot my headphones. That's no, no girl. sound at all. Not even that. Just a moment. Let's see if I can, uh... Cycle the power on my headphones, and if that helps. These headphones are a mess. Um, <sighs> give me just a moment. Everything is glitching. Some kind of weird lag. I don't know what that means. I don't know what the issue would be there. Oh. <sighs> the game just crashed because I, uh... No, it did not just crash. But it is... It's throwing an error message every time I, uh, every time I touch a button. So I'm going to save. And then I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and quit and we're going to try and reopen this. Okay, okay. One moment while I drag OBS back on the screen. How viable would it be to use a TV for audio? Not at all. That would not work at all. Okay, let's reload. Anyway, now I have sound again. And, uh, Dad just told us to go ahead and check on Emily, so that's what we're gonna do. Lots of photos on the wall. And Emily is down this end of the hall. Uh, one moment while I grab the chat window and make sure I can see it. Okay. And here we are in Emily's bedroom. Hey, Emily, how's it going? Nancy, hi. Welcome to the Lilac Inn. Oh, and before I forget, thank you for that nice note you sent me when Mom died. It meant a lot to me. Ah, oh, well, dead mom club. Well, I lost my mom, too, years ago. I kind of know how you feel. You and I may not be best friends or anything, but you're still one of the nicest people I know. I love these child... Thank you, or you obviously need to get out more. Being of hacked being invented in the 1930s. You obviously need to get out more. That's why I'm hoping you'll do me a favor. A big favor. You and your dad? Hey, let's just roll on right on by that one. Uh, my dad? What do you need my dad for? My dad? Helen says he's a lawyer. Shh! What's wrong? I thought I heard something. Your father has a safe, right? You need to put something in a safe? You need to put something in a safe? See this jewelry? I'd like you to take it home with you and put it in your father's safe. It's beautiful. It was my mother's. 
The few times I saw her wear it, she looked just like a movie star. I was hiding it here in my room, but all things considered, I'd feel a lot better if you would just take it home and have your father lock it up in his safe. What do you mean, all things considered? Strange things have been going on around here. That's all I can say. I know it sounds loony, and Jane probably told you that I've been acting loony, but please do this for me. What was that? Ah! Emily, come downstairs, quick! The kitchen's on fire! Come on, yes, we better get out of here! Aurora Borealis, located entirely in our kitchen. This is horrible, just horrible. The fire chief says the stove was completely destroyed and there's smoke damage everywhere. The inn will have to shut down for months, maybe even for good. Does he know what caused the explosion? It looked to him like one of the burners on the stove had been left on. The flame either went out or was never lit, but anyway, something made a spark and boom. He said insurance companies are very reluctant to pay out when things look hinky, and that's when times are good. Hinky? Hyper hinky bear cats, baby. Where did Emily go? She was right here. Emily was the last person to use the stove. Like I said, she's been real forgetful lately. I think she's pretty upset, but it's not her fault. What with her mom passing away barely a month ago, and me showing up, this total stranger who doesn't know the first thing about kids or running a restaurant, and her trying to do everything all by herself. It's just too much, that's all. Who wouldn't go a little off their nut? <sighs> I better get that. The line to the regular phone got burned up in the fire, so now the only phone we got is the coin phone on the porch. Excuse me. Emily? My mother's jewelry! It's gone! Someone must have stolen it while we were all downstairs. I knew something like this was going to happen. I just knew it. Jane said that you were the last one to use the stove. Is that true? I did not leave the stove on. That fire was not my fault. Oh, what am I going to do? Without that jewelry, I don't have a prayer of paying for a new stove. And without a stove, I'll have to sell the inn. And if I lose the inn... I wish Mom were still here. I wish Josiah Crowley had left us the money like he always said he was going to. That's what I wish. Who's Josiah Crowley? He was this old man that lived next door. He died last year. He spent most of his time here at the inn, and he led my mom and me to believe that he'd left a lot of money for us in his will. He gave us a clock, and afterwards, he'd always point to it and get this little twinkle in his eye and say, Time will tell. But when they finally found his will, he didn't leave us a penny. Uh, bear cats are a thing from this game, I know. Otter snakes are my own personal in-joke. Uh, in one of the later Nancy Drew games... You have a puzzle where you're attempting to align the heads of otters with the body of other otters. And you have to match their colors and such. Well, I kept managing to make creepy, bichromatic, two-headed otter snakes. And that became kind of a personal side joke for Sona of mine. Uh, God knows I will never actually commission art of a two-headed, bichromatic otter snake. But... I love them conceptually. Uh, so, about Josiah Crowley, was there a problem finding his will? Was there a problem finding his will? It didn't turn up for months. Then finally someone found it in a drawer in Josiah's house. Josiah was kind of a screwball. <laughs> One time he showed up at my birthday party dressed as my great aunt Harriet. I didn't know it was really him until two days later. Anyway, he had all these weird hobbies, and he always thought it would be really keen to read minds. Josiah invited Richard Topham to move in so Topham could help him develop his paranormal powers right there in his house. Josiah was a sweet old man, and I do miss him, and he was free to give his money to whomever he wanted. But to get our hopes up like that, and then leave us nothing, it just wasn't like him. I love... I love Emily giggling like a chipmunk there for just a moment. Uh, where's Richard Topham now? Where is Richard Topham now? 
He still lives in Josiah's house, which is right down the path out back. His house and the inn were built at the same time by two brothers during the Civil War. Interesting trivia. Thank you. Okay, who, how, who many people, who, who many people knew? How many people knew you kept your mother's jewelry in here? No one. Well, Jane, my guardian, she knew, but I didn't tell anyone else. Uh-huh. Okay. Was your mother's jewelry insured? Gosh, I forgot about that. I don't know. Jim Archer, I bet he'd know. He's our banker. I guess I should go talk to him. You don't sound very happy about it. I'm just so bad at business things. And Jane, my guardian, she tries hard, but she's no good at it either. Maybe you could go talk to him. Please, it would be such a big help. Sure, or I guess. I guess. He runs the Main Street Bank. You can't miss it. I'll call him and tell him you're coming. I'll be back in a little bit. Okay. Um, so yeah, Secret of the Old Clock. I'm sure the old clock, in fact, has nothing whatsoever to do with anything. Uh, we could look around Jane's room. Uh, not Jane's room. We could look around Emily's room. And in fact, let's have a quick glance around Emily's room. Let's check out her stuff. I'm sure she won't mind. Um, nothing here. Umbrella, not important. Wardrobe, not important. Sewing machine. Is this your sewing machine? Actually, that belonged to my mom. She and Jane used to be dressmakers. Mom was going to teach me how to use it, but she... She never got the chance. Alas. Um, is the indie music too loud? I just want to make sure everybody can hear over it. Nice in background? Good. Uh, Bess bothering with my favorite pastime and other write-ups. You know, I've never called Bess in Secret of the Old Clock because it didn't fit the, uh, the frame story that I originally had for writing this up. We're, we're going to give her a call when we go downstairs. It's a bit of a waste of money, but I don't care. Ah, uh, the Rubiat of Omar Khayyam. Gloria, read this, and pretty soon this fellow will be your favorite poet, too. Your pal, Josiah. Oh, this font. This font kind of hurts. Uh... Hmm. You know, so I really don't know, Celine. Um, are you using Twitch alternatives? Is your buffer set, like, super high, maybe? I don't know. Uh, myself, when young, did eagerly frequent doctor and saint and heard great agreement, heard great argument about it and about, but evermore came out by the same door when and I went. With them the seed of wisdom did I sow, and with mine own hand wrought to make it grow, and this was all the harvest I reaped. I came like water, and like wind I go. When you and I beyond the veil are past, oh, but the long, long, while the world shall last, which of our coming and departure heeds, as the gear itself should heed a pebble cast. A moment's halt, a momentary taste of being from the well and mid the waste, and lo, the phantom caravan hath each the nothing it set out from, all make haste. O oh, threats of hell and hopes of paradise, one thing at least is certain, this life flies. One thing is certain, and the rest is lies. The flower that has once bloomed forever dies. Strange is it not that of the myriad who, before us pass the door of darkness through, not one returns to tell us of the road which to discover we must travel to. So this is the most cheerful possible book that em Emily could have in her bedroom right now while she's dealing with that. Uh, 
Uh, let's see what else we got. We've got a record player. Uh, we could put on a record, but there's no real reason to do so right now. But let's go check out the rest of the inn. Uh, anything behind us? No? Alright. We're not allowed to check out any of these rooms up here. Presumably they are private. There's a large number of portraits of randos. But, you know, there's no reason not to stage the grounds a little bit. How's it going, James? So? Is Emily all right? Someone stole her mother's jewelry. What? She was showing it to me just before the explosion. Now it's gone. Someone stole it while everybody was rushing around trying to put out the fire? Hypers! If you can't trust a fireman, who can you trust? Hypers? Holy Hyper Hinky Bearcats, Batman. Emily said you were the only one who knew she had that jewelry. When Gloria was alive, she could have told people about it, or people may have seen her wearing it. And when she died, they knew the jewelry had to be around here somewhere, right? Does anyone in particular come to mind? Sorry. It's been hard enough getting to know Emily, let alone anyone else in this backwater burg. Well, guess better go call the sheriff. Is that your car I saw when I drove up the driveway? My old rust bucket's parked out back where nobody will see it. Be nice to buy something decent, but last time I checked, my last name was Willoughby, not Rockefeller. Well, I'll talk to you later. You betcha. You betcha. Yeah, that particular door is sealed off, and uh, we can't get at this clock either. Well, we've been told to head down to the bank, so maybe we ought to get that out of the way. Doing a good impression of Bobby's mom. Oh, yeah. Well, that's just a Minnesota voice, don't you know? Hmm, that car I saw before is gone. Okay, uh, we can drive Nancy's car, and I have never been good at driving Nancy's car. So what we're gonna do... is save for when I inevitably run our car off the road and we all die. Now we gotta find the bank, whoops. We gotta find the bank, give me just a moment. Where roughly is the ba Main Street Bank? Here's the lilac in, so we just gotta go, we just gotta turn a couple of corners, and we're cool. Uh, there, here's the Main Street Bank. Let's see if I can park. Hello, I'm looking for Jim Archer. Right through that door. Hello, are you Nancy Drew? Yes, are you Mr. Archer? Yes, ma'am, Jim Archer. I'm founder, president, manager, and just about everything else you can name when it comes to this fine enterprise. No, you're not, you're Mr. Potato Head. Uh, did Emily tell you why I'm here? Did Emily tell you why I'm here? She just said you were coming and that she'd appreciate it if I would talk to you. Terrible thing, losing her mother like that. Then being saddled with that restaurant, especially now. What do you mean? Ever since the stock market crashed, one business after another has closed, including banks. President Hoover keeps saying that a recovery is just around the corner, but you have to wonder. If your bank is doing okay? Or some people say we're headed for a depression. I think we should be very helpful to him. Some people say we're headed for a depression. Well, that kind of pessimism is not only misguided, it's pointless. Thinking ahead and taking action. That's what we businessmen should be doing right now. And I'm happy to report that we're doing just fine, thank you. Excuse me. Main Street Bank, Jim Archer speaking. No, I don't. I'm sorry, but... Yes, I know, but... 
All right, then just bring it by. Sorry for the interruption. How can I help you? I guess you had to put your face back on there, huh, man? How well do you know Jane Willoughby? You know, Emily's guardian? Not well at all. Met her once or twice. Seemed a little... flighty. Do you think Emily's going to be able to run the inn by herself? Times are just too tough. If she's smart, she'll sell before the bills start piling up. Do you happen to know whether the jewelry Emily inherited from her mother was insured? Well, I know for a fact that it was not. Why? Because someone snuck into the inn today and stole it. Oh, no. I heard there'd been a fire in the kitchen, but... When it rains, it pours, doesn't it? I told Gloria not to let that policy lapse. Oh, no. You're so concerned, my dude. Uh, why did she let it lapse? Why did she let it lapse? She felt that since Josiah Crowley would be leaving her a large sum of money when he died, or so she thought, paying to insure her jewelry just wasn't necessary. Yeah, what about this Josiah guy? How well did you know Josiah Crowley? Well enough for him to name me executor of his will. An executor is the person who makes sure the terms of a will are carried out. He leave you anything? Did he leave you anything? He'd given me the impression that I would be well taken care of when he passed on, too. But when I finally read his will, it all went to top him. Where did Josiah keep his will? He'd hidden it in a chest of drawers in his house. It took me months to find it. When he named me executor, he said he'd tell me where it was hidden when the time was right. Whatever that meant. I wonder if it meant something related to a clock. No, that would be crazy. The will you found in Josiah's house. Is it possible that Josiah didn't really write it? Well, the thought that it could be a forgery did cross my mind. But an expert verified that the will had been typed on Josiah's typewriter and signed in Josiah's hand. But Richard Topham lived in Josiah's house. He had access to his typewriter, and he could have copied his signature. As far as the law is concerned, the matter is closed, Miss Drew. But it's possible that Josiah's real will is still out there. Are you sure he never gave you any clue as to where he'd hidden his will? Whenever I asked him, he said he'd tell me when the time is right. Although, he got a safe deposit box here about three years ago. Here you can see the beginnings of Nancy going, Well, the law may say that, but the law is bullshit. What's really happening here? And I love that about her. Has it been opened? Topham has tried to claim its contents, but he can't find the key. Maybe he knows the real will could be in there. Only he wants to destroy it. Now, Miss Drew, I wouldn't go jumping to any conclusions. Bullshit. I will leap like an Olympic champion. How did Josiah die? He was sitting in the public library reading when, apparently, his heart just decided it was time to stop. What was he reading? His favorite book, The Makeup Secrets of Lon Chaney. That is a weird favorite book, but, you know, it does kind of imply that maybe Topham is disguised as someone else. I don't know. That Nick changed to strand. Law. I guess I'll be going. Nice talking to you. I am the law. I'm Nancy Drew, and I am the law. Oh, hello. They're, they're Don't you ever use this typewriter? That used to be Josiah Crowley's. It was the only thing he left me in his will. Naturally, it doesn't work. The keys always jam. You know, naturally. October 9, 1929. Dear Mrs. Sheldon, here is the... trivet I said you could borrow. For your party at Twin Elms, please take care of it because I will want it back someday. Your friend, Josiah C. I wonder if Josiah ever got his trivet back. Interesting. 
Uh, let's see, anything Who's else? Clara? Clara Pickford is this lonely old woman who comes in here every once in a while. Took a shine to me for some reason. Insisted on giving me that picture. Interesting. Did Jim Archer, my ace in the hole. You know, I wouldn't want to be anybody's ace hole. Hello, Keldon. Good to see you. The number of laws she has to break in the course of solving a mystery are like the way you track Sierra. <laughs> Where did you get this clock? Josiah Crowley gave it to me. It stopped keeping time the minute he walked out the door. Naturally, it's another, it's an old clock. Looks like the key is missing. Yes, I, uh, lost it some time ago. Ah, afraid not. Is this your car? Yes, it is. Bought and paid for. And who's the lady with it? Yeah, he, uh, lost it. Let's see, do we have anything left to talk to him about? Hello again. Was that your car I saw parked near the Lilac Inn this morning? I haven't been there in months. You saw someone else's car. It's a very popular make and color, you know. Whose ever car it was, it wasn't there after the fire. Probably just someone sneaking onto that miniature golf course that Josiah built back there. Or bootleggers. I hear they frequent that area, too. Ah, yes. Bootlegging mini golf players. Uh, these are some very old-school everything animations. And that's because this game is from the merry old year of... Let's see if I can alt-tab without crashing anything. When is this game from? I'd, I have to check now because I'm not 100% positive. 2005, and it looked dated then. I guess I'll be going. Goodbye now. Yeah, these are the Nancy Drewist graphics of the Nancy Drew series. I lie, there are more Nancy Drew Lear graphics. Anyway, um... Let's see, where do we have to go? Our father wants us to go to the telegram place and pick up some papers. We should do that. And... We also found a note at the bank. Uh, we want to talk out... We want to talk to... Yeah, we found that note at the, at the bank about the trivet. And, you know what? I forgot to note down where exactly that was. What, what state are we in? We are in the state of Drew. Uh, dear Mr. Party at Twilight Elms or some such. Twin Elms. So, Twin Elms, uh, that is not on the, that is not on the list. Oh, well, let's go out to the Tubby Telegrams. I want a Tubby Telegram. Is, is a Tubby Telegram just like, uh, Dear Eater, stop, stop eating, stop. Something I can do for you? Well, my name's Nancy Drew, and my father Say said Say no that... more. You're here to pick up some papers. They're in that envelope. Thank you. You're welcome. Say, is that your roadster out there? Yes, it is. Did I park somewhere I shouldn't have? No, no. It's just that my regular driver never showed up today, so I've got no way to deliver all these telegrams. How would you like to earn some extra cash? You mean you want me to deliver them for you? You've got a car, you're trustworthy, or at least your father thinks you are, so what do you say? I'll pay you 25 cents each time you complete a delivery. And you might even get some tips. Um, yeah, all right, but we're not going to spend a long time on... Well, not right now, actually. We have a case to investigate if we find ourselves in need of extra money. No, I don't think so. All right, but if you change your mind, just come on in. Never hurts to have a little extra spending money, you know? I'll keep that in mind. Bye. 
Yeah, if we need extra money, we'll stop in here. But let's get back to the inn. We, we haven't finished investigating. Oh god, oh god. Uh, there is a pothole right there. Let's not drive into it. I'm trying my best not to get us all killed. By driving into the river or something. There we go. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. You're the chubby t Well, that makes sense. Uh, can I actually do that? I can... Not quite, but if we blow a tire, and I replace the tire, and we don't go to a gas station to get the tire replaced, we will get a game over. There are many ways to game over in this game, and I will show you as many of them as I can. Hey, the rules of the road are very strict. Anyway, let's see what else we can check out in this inn. Uh, Jane got anything to say? Oh, Nancy, I'm afraid there's been more trouble. Don't tell me something else blew up. It's Emily. She... Oh, this is silly. I'm her guardian. I should just make her sell this place. She's only 17, for Pete's sakes. She should be out meeting boys and going to parties, not trying to run a business. Miss Willoughby, what happened? Just go ask her and make her tell you everything. Okay. Um, I love that this is apparently the first appearance of the she should have been at the club meme. All right, Emily, what's up? Jane told you, didn't she? What happened? That picture on the wall over there? I saw 1930. it 1930. I was just sitting here and it moved all by itself. I saw it move. I really did. Last week, a book fell off the shelf for no reason. And before that, I heard these weird noises. And almost every day I hear a voice, like a whisper, coming out of nowhere. Jane thinks it's nerves, but I... I don't want to talk about this. Did you see Jim Archer? I'm afraid I don't have very good news. The jewelry wasn't insured? No, but I do have some good news, sort of. Shh! Did you hear that? Hear what? Shh! Nothing. I'm going to have to sell the inn, aren't I? You know, it's possible, just possible, that the will that was found was not the will Josiah wrote. You mean, he may have left us money after all? No, that's wishful thinking. And I refuse to get my hopes up again because they'll probably just get dashed again. Listen, I feel bad enough that you drove all the way out here for nothing. Maybe you should just go home. Go home? With a mystery unsolved? That is unnancy like behavior. Would you mind if I stayed for a while? No, but I really don't feel like being sociable right now. There's nothing for you to do. I'd like to try to figure out why that stove exploded. <laughs> what are you? Some kind of Sam Spade? Well, just because I've never solved a mystery before doesn't mean I can't. Anyway, there's no harm in trying, right? Who knows? I might turn out to be good at it. Be my guest. But yeah, Keldon, this is the early 1930s. Nancy Drew's first case ever. Because she's old as balls. Do you have any idea where Josiah may have hidden a safe deposit box key? He could have hidden it anywhere. He always said his favorite hiding place was right under people's noses. Give me your lower lip. Did Josiah ever say anything about hiding his will somewhere? No, but he was always hiding stuff. I know because he was always writing reminders to himself about how to find it. But whenever the subject of his will came up, he'd just say he was happy knowing we were going to be happy when he passed on. Time will tell. That's all he'd say. I'll be back in a little bit. Thanks again, Nancy. All right, we're gonna ha we have to find this clock that uh, Josiah left Emily's family. I mean, call me insane, but I definitely think that an old clock would have something to do with the game called The Secret of the Old Clock. Is it in here, maybe? Uh, nope, this is... 
What the hell is this? Bard Bounce, a game based upon a Midsummer Night's Dream, a play by Woon Shakespeare. Do Shakespeare proud by using the arrows to move each man to the women with whom he belongs. Remember, love is never easy. Whenever you move someone, he will keep going until he hits an obstacle, another character, or the end of the row, so plan ahead. Five cents per game. Okay, let's play Bard Bounce. Uh, presumably you have to color code the guys and girls. Let's see. The build-up to that was horror music. A little bit, perhaps. Um. In order to hit the green person... It is an ice physics puzzle, but you didn't expect that. That's one. That's two. Can I still do this? I'm not actually sure. I think I may be stuck. I'm not stuck. Am I stuck? I'm unsure if I'm stuck. I think I just got that backwards, actually. Try this again. Alright, what I need to do is, um... This up here. Then ideally... Hmm. I might be stuck. A little bit. A little tiny bit. Yeah, I think I'm stuck. Oops. Well, such things will happen. Several ways you can get yellow. I think you're right about that. So hyped to be back with adventure game. Yeah, I'm so hyped to be stuck for the next hour on some adventure game puzzles while you all uh, cheer at me and I fuck up repeatedly. That's... It's gonna be fantastic. Uh, why did I do that? Oh, and then... No, wait. I send him... All right, I gotta send him around. If I send him all the way around, though, um, I will kind of fuck this up. So, what I need to do is go up, around, down. And I need uh, the yellow one in front. No. Other way. I do not need the yellow one in front. I need the red one in front.
Yeah, that makes sense, uh, Celine. Like... Together, I could definitely get them here. Oh, cool. Uh, good luck with your game, Calvin. I'm glad you got somebody to play with. Have a good time. Yeah, I think I'm going to back off this for now, and uh, we will come back to it later. What else we got in here? We got the... We got a light... Uh, like magazine. Same naturalist John were. Clever Hans. What he taught his master and us. Late last century, a retired teacher named Wilhelm von Austin set out to prove that animals are far more intelligent than commonly believed. And that they are perfectly capable of adding, subtracting, even telling time, provided they receive the proper education. He bought a horse called Hans and proceeded to teach him arithmetic as if he were a schoolboy using carrots instead of a hickory stick to elicit the desired responses. Yeah, because we hit children with a stick here in the 1930s. The time of barbarism. Amazingly, within two years, Hans was able to give the answers to mathematical problems by pawing the, by pawing the ground with his hooves. More amazingly, the horse was almost never wrong. Von Austin was convinced that he had indeed taught his horse arithmetic, and for years it seemed everyone who saw clever Hans in action that Von Austin was right. A particular interest to the scientific community was the fact that the horse was able to give the correct answer even when von Austin was not present, which ruled out the possibility his master was perpetuating a hoax by giving him subtle hand or voice signals. But finally, a scientist named Oscar Funkst observed that Hans gave the correct answer, that is, he pawed the ground the correct number of times with his oath, only when someone whom the horse could see knew the answer to the problem that had been posed. This meant that the horse was... Indeed, reacting to visual cues, eventually funds to prove that Hans' cleverness lie not in his math skills, but in his uncanny ability to perceive tiny, involuntary body movements. When the pawing horse reached the correct answer, the people around him would react, albeit unconsciously. A nod of the head, a relaxing of the shoulders, a straightening of the back, all were clues which to Hans meant it was time to stop pawing and enjoy the carrot which was soon to be forthcoming. Von Austin, who had all along had been unwittingly providing his wonder horse with the correct answer, died five years later, far too disillusioned and humiliated to appreciate the invaluable lesson that his misadventure in equine education had taught the rest of us. Thanks to Hans, we now know that what people do without being aware that they are doing it can speak volumes. And thanks to his master, we know that if a man wants to believe something is true badly enough, he'll unconsciously find a way to make it true. But like Hans, the more observant we are, the more likely it is we'll pick up on the cues the believer is inadvertently providing us with. Cues that will ultimately allow us, like Funkst, to discern fact from fancy. Interesting. Uh, sign language becoming widespread. That's nice to know. Huge meteor crash lands in Arkansas. Uh, Main Street, 5 and 10, forced close-up shop. A radio scene is one of the biggest branches of show business. As the number of homeless men drifting from town to town looking for handouts increases with hard times, so too does the use of peculiar signs and symbols they have developed to communicate with each other. To see these hobo symbols in action, you may well need to look no further than your own backyard. For example, is there a circle with an arrow coming out to the side drawn in chalk or coal on a nearby sidewalk? It means the hobo is telling his fellow vagrants to go this way. If the arrow is drawn through the circle, he's telling fellow vagrants, do not go this way. Is there a circle with an X in the middle on your fence? And expect visitors, because it indicates this is a good place for a ha handout. A plain empty circle might be more to your liking, for it means nothing here. What follows are some of the most common symbols and their meanings. So next time you see one on a fence, wall, or railroad trestle, you'll be in the know. Interesting. Um, there's a lot of uh, thieves can't and such in fantasy stories that works the same way. We'll come back to that. What's over here?
It's a sofa. It's a trap door. We found a secret passage. I'm amazed it took us an hour. Uh-huh. Somebody uses this regularly. <laughs> Thank you. From the looks of those lanterns, I'm not the only one who's been down here recently. Ah, Nancy notices too. What's through here? Hello. An old piggy bank. Swell, a dollar. This piggy bank looks like it's been here for a long time. A dollar! Let's just loot that and uh, make a run for it, I guess. Hello, what's this? Oh. Okay. Let's barbecue these shanks. <laughs> I felt bad about doing this briefly. And then uh, what do we have more. here? All right, this isn't so bad. We can swap them and we can... Rotate them. Oh, let's see. Uh, this looks like... Creepies. Creepies corn dogs. Creepy's Corner. Alright. What? Okay, and we can see the shape of the moon. Creepy's Corn Kids. Mmm, delicious. We can see the shape of the moon here. Let's uh, work through that. No, mister. You obey the laws of gravity on this sliding puzzle. Corny's Creepers. All right, let's fill out the outline of the moon. Uh, like this? No. Here, then. Where is that bottom corner of the moon? Right here. All right, uh, let's finish out the... Lower torso. Mister, you got legs? You got legs, mister? Mister, where's your legs? Are these your legs, mister? Yeah, those look like your legs. Uh, and then there's a tomb here. This all looks correct. The leggies have left the building. That's very possible. Alright, now we're gonna have to work on contextual clues. Like, uh... It looks like there's... A tomb here. Can I get this to look right? No, not really. about this? Uh, the right side of the cross. Oh, good point. Right here. Thank you very mu much. Um, hmm. This looks like it's in the wrong place, then. We need the rest of that tree. And indeed, it looks like this is the second half here. We need the rest of that tree. Where would it... I guess it would be this. But it's upside down, isn't it? No, it's just sideways. All right. Um...
This doesn't quite look right. This looks wrong, this looks wrong. Let's swap them. Hmm. Right now, this is the only one that really stands out to me as being... Put all the mist on the bottom row. Ooh, the mist, you're right. You're right, those weren't his legs at all. That was one side of the door. Maybe this is the other side of the door. Is that his arm? It is his arm. Now we just need to decide if the mist is a top thing or a bottom thing. It looks like it's a bottom thing. Yeah, I think I'm supposed to uh, switch these two. That looks right. That looks right. Why is it not right? No. Uh, I think this one may be wrong, actually. Hmm. His leg was actually just the man. Oop, I'm freaking out. Lower left. Right down here. You're right. Where does this go? Uh, this one looks fine. Hmm. No, no, that... No, that's not right. You're right. I can tell that's not right. I'm just not entirely sure, uh... Which of these needs... Cur no, that's definitely a tree trunk. When it was swapped, it looked right. Like this? Alright, so... Do I just need to take a step back? No. Oh, you bet. Okay, good. <laughs> I about had a heart attack. Alright. Do I need the back of this guy's hand? Do I need to... Right side, just off the top right corner, that tree branch. The right side. And the trunk was fine where it was. Okay. Just off the top right corner. Uh, is it this tree branch? Oh, I'm having a little trouble. One to the right of that. This tree branch. All right, Colin. Second from top. Oh! You know what? I never would have saw that. Thank you very much. What do we got? Creepy corner. It's a record. We'll take that into Emily's room and have a listen. And yeah, the music sure got... Uh, Awfully ominous, didn't it? What's in here? This certainly is a long secret tunnel. Guess I better not leave the lights on. Sounds like this door opens into someone's Want living some room. Lunch? Mm -hmm. There you go, good kitty. Sounds like this door opens into someone's living room, and apparently Nancy doesn't want to bust up through the floor like, Hi! I'm Nancy Drew. Are you suspicious? 
So, uh, I guess we'll leave that alone for now. And hoof it back through the incredibly dark and creepy tunnel. That seems like the Kool-Aid man, but for floors. Oh, God, I would pay actual fucking money. Guess I better if... not leave the lights on. I would pay actual fucking money to see that. Well, let's come up out of this chair. And, uh, what else have we got in here? Oh, hey, it's presumably the titular clock. Who likes traffic jam puzzles? Yeah, you know, uh, plain, like, the thing is, once I got hooked on, uh, this kind of puzzle from Nancy Drew, I, this, that, this was my gateway drug to hidden object games. Nancy Drew is a gateway drug that starts you down the path of being a tiny old lady. you ever want to be a tiny old lady in your day-to-day -day life, uh, start playing Nancy Drew games. And you will become the tiniest old lady. Alright, uh, what I need to do is have the bird ford to here. And then I just need to get this out of the way, so... Except if I do that, I've locked myself off. You're at least 15% a tiny old late. That's tr I congratulate you on your high uh, LOL percentage. That's not a real thing. That is not a real thing. What, are, what, what, what am I talking about? That has never been a thing. Unfortunately, I cannot navigate the bird up and down. Birds don't go up and down. Uh, you might think they do, but they don't. So. Right. Yump. Bonk. Bonk. The thing is to just inexorably head forward. Heading forward will never lead you astray, I'm sure. It has led me astray. I am astray right now. When is a bird not a bird? When it's astray. I can't move this up or down? Aw, oh, that sucks. At least I am not ashtray. That's true. I am not an ashtray type. I am, at best, uh, I don't know. I don't have any idea how to follow that sentence up. Puzzles like these are how the bad guys try to assassinate. That is true. Uh, I love Professor Layton, too. I think Professor Layton and Nancy Drew would be an even more interesting crossover than Professor Layton and uh, Phoenix Wright was. Wonder what this mirror is doing in here. It's a mirror. It would show Nancy's true face if we were to gaze upon it. So we cannot, lest we be destroyed. So, what did Emily say? Did she tell you about the pictures and the voices? Have you ever seen or heard anything strange around here? No. In fact, this place is so quiet and dull compared to Chicago that it's a wonder I haven't lost my mind. You know what? I'll bet it's me. 
I'll bet it finally hit Emily that I'm just not Gloria and I never will be and that running this place is always going to be all up to her. And it was just more than her poor mind could bear. That's an interesting theory. Unfortunately, I believe you're wrong as fuck. What did the sheriff say when you called him about the stolen jewels? He said since nobody got robbed at gunpoint or anything, coming out here again just didn't seem necessary. Said it sounded to him like the jewelry had just been misplaced. You see, I, well, it only felt fair to tell him about Emily's, you know, delicate state of mind. Where did that barred bounce game that's in the parlor come from? Do you know? Emily says Josiah Crowley brought it in one day and just left it. Said it was so guests, as in him, would have something to do while they waited for a table. Yeah, I... I did my... I do my best, uh... To talk in that sort of measured, very earnest sort of way that Nancy does. It doesn't always work. I can't always do it, but... Well, I'll talk to you later. Don't take any wooden nickels. From who? Who's giving out wooden nickels? Can I have one? All right, we've been all around the inn. Let's check out the grounds. The faux shop. Uh, pop, maybe? Like, Crazy Red wants to give me a nickel. That's a nice little bridge. Uh, doesn't really... Oh! Got it. A... Looks like someone recently had a key appraised. A key? Oh, thank you, Rick. That's, that's, uh, that's sweet. Received on March 11th, 1930. We are almost contemporary with this game. Anyway, let's check out this, uh, key appraisal. That sounds like something that could be important. After all, we have a bunch of, uh, clocks around here that don't have Waddell jewelry. Nancy, no! Look out for the FMV! Nancy, it's coming right for you. Ah, uh, there's the dairy farm. Hello, are you Mr. Waddell? So what if I am? I found this receipt, and I just wondered what you could tell me about it. Let me see that. One key, determine resale value, item 493. Oh yeah, this was for that key Jim Archer wanted me to appraise. Jim Archer wanted you to appraise a key? It was very ornate, had jewels all over it. Fake jewels, as it turned out. When I told him it was worthless, the cheapskate refused to pay me and told me to keep it. Do you think I could have it? Sure, once you pay the appraisal fee. Which is? A dollar and fifty cents. <sighs> Here you go. Good, here's the key. Enjoy. All right, we got a key. Uh, we, we could take that... Let's take that over to the bank, since the bank is right next door. You know, the minute you walked out of here, something occurred to me. You're Carson Drew's daughter, aren't you? <laughs> Guilty. We went to law school together. Only he actually went into law, and I wound up here. So how's he doing? Business pretty good? Great. Couldn't be better. That's nice. That's real nice. Well, you tell him you saw me, and you tell him I'm doing just fine too. So what can I do for you? Nice. Great. Well, you tell him I'm doing just fine. You tell him I'm not shackled to the chains of a bank that's going downhill. Fast. You tell him that. And see if he believes you. Cause I don't. Why does this driving music sound like I'm being chased by the anthill mob? 1930s, baby! The key that you had Mr. Waddell appraise, could that be the key to the clock that Josiah Crowley gave you? It might have been, I suppose. You know about that? Yes. In fact, I paid the appraisal fee. I have the key right here. How industrious of you. You see, when he told me the key was worthless, I lost all interest in it. So, it would be alright if I kept the key for myself? 
I have no use for it. In fact, if you want that old clock, you can have it, too. I guess I'll be going. Nice talking to you. All right, let's see what this key does. It would sure be nice to be able to open this thing. Uh, gears. Let's gear up. All right. Metal gears. Solid. If it locks into place and we can't move it afterwards, uh, then we're on the right track. That's where it's supposed to be. And you notice these little lines? They always point towards the next gear. So... This one I remember the solution to, roughly, because I sure spent a lot of fucking time staring at it. <laughs> Hello, Koopa. Yeah, get that on the peg. No, not there. Uh, here? Mm-hmm. And then we need one that's... Uh, this one won't go on this peg. At all. Okay. Yes, it is the Koopo. Solitary. Alright, that's the top. So, these go down here. And this is the end point. There we go. Clock works. Well, what do you know? It's a second mirror. Now we have two. I'm not allowed to sort them, really. Hey, I fixed your clock, by the way. Hello again. I guess I'll be going. Say hi to Carson for me. Okay. What's with his framed dollar? I don't know. Uh, he's a banker. Maybe it's his, like, first... Maybe it's one of those first dying situations. Go back out on the road? Um... Where to now? You know, maybe we could use a little bit of extra money. Let's talk about that telegram guy and, uh... Why, hello, Nancy. Change your mind about delivering those telegrams for me? No, I just dropped in to say hi. All right, but if you start running low on money, you know what you can do about it. Thank you, bye. I clicked the wrong button. Why, hello, Nancy. Change your mind about delivering those telegrams for me? Well, I could use some extra cash. Great, you're hired. Here, deliver this to Seymour out at Blenheim Nursery. Come back when you're done and I'll pay you and give you another telegram to deliver. Great. See you in a little while. Blenheim Nursery. That looks like it's right next door. No, that's Joe Wood, Low Wood Academy. Uh, where is my map? Blenheim Nursery is right next to the Lilac Inn. Oh, God. That is a cow. Apparently, we are not allowed to hit the cow. I tried. Hello, I've got a telegram for Seymour. Just leave it on the desk there. I'd, uh, tip you, but as you can see, my hands are filthy. What are you doing? I'm trying to doll up some of my plants before this guy named Mr. Martin comes in. He's a big cheese at some oil company, and I'm hoping he... Ow! Did that plant just bite you? It did kind of feel that way. I think I'll be going now. Bye! Feed me, Seymour. Yeah. <laughs> 
We're not going to comment on that, I don't think. Uh, oops, telegram. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Bumps and stuff on my desk did there. Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. Take this to Counselor Alice out at Camp Avondale. Keep up the good work. Camp Avondale. All right. Well, we might as well. Uh, we'll do a couple more just to build up a buffer of funds. Just in case we need it. Camp Avondale is way out here. Plus, this gets us, you know, acquainted with the town. A buffer of fun? Yeah. Hi, I've got a telegram for a counselor here named Alice. That's me. Hang on. Oh, go dry up, Jason! <laughs> what a jokester. Anyway, thanks. I'm afraid I don't have any money to tip you. That's okay. Have a swell day. Ah, that wacky Jason. Always in trouble at camp. Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. Deliver this to Mr. Jones at Vash's Dairy. Keep up the good work. Alright, um... How much do we have? $3.40. Yeah, let's deliver this one last one, and, uh... Then we can walk away from the telegram job for a little bit. Where is... He said Vash's something. And I have already forgotten what he said. Um, Vash's Dairy. Yes, Vash's Dairy. That's what it said. Um, Vash's Dairy. That is not on the map. Okay, uh... Maybe it's a place with the cow next to it. General store, Vosh's Dairy. Yeah. Hello. Get off my property now! And take that. Oh, that's the Johnson's farm. Machine with you. <laughs> Fine, I'm going. Whatever you say. Yikes. Even Nancy can be rattled now and then. It looks like. Right, can't approach it from that angle. Hello, I need to deliver this telegram to Mr. Jones. That's me, thanks. You can tell me I'm all wet, but I don't have any money to tip you with. Wait a minute, here, how about a nice fresh glass of milk? Uh, no, thank you. Bye. I don't think we're going to get any tips out of this, you guys. Oh, well. Let's get paid and then get back to the plot. What was the plot? Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. This one goes to Miss Ross at Sunnybrook Farm. Keep up the good work. Get all Sunnybrook Farm. Oh, fly back in. Nancy can make some snap turns. I've only got half a tank of gas left. I should gas up before I forget. Hmm. Right, next time we get in the car, we should go to the gas station. Good point. Anyway, before we uh, drove off, we were going to investigate this half of the grounds. What's over here? Another bridge. Uh, there is a path that leads... Oh, a miniature golf course! Swell! To mini-golf! Make par for the course, win a prize!
Uh, the object of golf ball game. The object of the game is to figure out the sequence of the colored golf balls hidden behind the panel. Oh, it's Mastermind. Uh, if the stick with a flag on it appears below the column, correct color, correct position. Correct color, wrong position. One of the balls doesn't belong. All right. All right, let's play Mastermind, I guess. Uh, blue. Red. Uh, green. Yellow. Um, we have the right color in one position. And... Hmm, okay. So, I'm gonna go red, blue, I guess this is orange, and this is yellow. Correct color in one position. That told me nothing, really. Except that green probably isn't one of the colors. So, try red and green there. Um, purple and yellow. Oh no, let's not put yellow there. Let's put blue there. Uh, I think I got the uh, correct color. I think I got red in the right place. Or possibly I have... Is that blue or purple? This is purple. Okay. So I think I've got red in the right place now. Uh, let's try green because we haven't had green here yet. Let's try... I think it's also trying to tell me that I need to repeat one of these colors. Let's do green here, here, and here. Oh, I'm completely wrong on everything. Fuck me. All right. I'm not actually very good at Mastermind, you guys. Well, if red is wrong, we can take that off the list entirely. But we know that green probably could. Hmm. The branch forgot the rules. I'm sorry. Uh, I may move on from this if I don't get it soon. Hmm. Green first position. Purple. No. Orange and purple. Yeah, it's Mastermind. Uh, you are very far behind, Nesseline. Yeah, I'm not getting this one right now. Play a little bit of mini golf. Oh, then yeah, you're actually pretty caught up. That's good. It looks like the ball and putter go here. Play insert 10 cents. Well, we just got paid. So, yo, in that case, I will recruit you for help after we're done playing. Oops, if I'm going to play golf, I'm going to need a golf ball and putter. After I'm done playing mini golf. Club. 
and a ball. So yeah, I will recruit you for aid with that after we have uh, played some mini golf. We have to beat par, so we have to beat 21 on this course. Can do that. All one. Who's ready to play mini golf in the Nancy Drew engine? Oh, that shot sucked. Get in the ball. Get in the ball. Birdie ball ball. Ball birdie ball. Ball ball Now birdie. just par. Birdie birdie ball ball ball. Oh. Just par. I'm sorry. Uh... Okay, I gotta nail this fucker, apparently. Had a physical version. Oh. Well, shit, that's nice. Oh, no! No, I'm not gonna get par on this course, folks. I'm gonna get stuck here, and I'm gonna die. And explode. Yeah, par four, my score five. Well, I, I'm, st I'm still in it with a chance. All right, that was par. Meow. Yet your time has come. Uh, believe me, I will rec I will accept your help. As soon as we're done putting it up. Putting it out. Oh no. Shouldn't be driving this car. Railroad crossing, okay. Nope, 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 nope. That's a square... Ah, uh, no, I am, I'm gonna come in way above par. My butt sucks. My butt sucks and it's bad. And there are places you just can't hit the ball hard from. Oh, no. Okay, can I hit it that? Yeah, okay. Uh, and then we go up the mound. In there. Oh. Well, that was par. I just need to magically uh, hit this. No, no, I am. I'm good with letting you show off your skills. I've already committed. Okay, let's sock it through here. Now that's gonna bounce weirdly. Oh god, that sucked. What am I doing? Shove a putter up my butthole. No, go in the hole. Go in the hole. Go in the... Yes, good. Yes, yes. Very, very correct. Very right. No, the hole! Darn. Well, you know, we can do this with practice. Right now, though, let's go ahead and uh, hit up Mastermind. Um... I'm pretty sure you know how Mastermind works. Using this feedback, make your guesses, etc. Uh, the order of the sticks has nothing to do with the order of the balls and the solution. It is the only part of this that I might have to uh, let you know. Like, that's the only thing that could potentially throw you. Alright, uh... I guess I'll just toss up a starter guess. 
We've got yellow, red, green, blue, orange, and purple. Orange and purple look alarmingly like blue and green, so... I'm gonna go with, uh... Monocolor it to start. Let's go with blue. Monocolor blue, like the worst magic deck you could possibly play. One is correct. I'm just gonna rub these, uh, rub these tantalizingly shiny balls. Blue, yellow, yellow, yellow. B, Y, Y, Y. That is one correct and one in the wrong spot. Oh, alright. Well, that means that the top one's probably correct. Alright, I see what you're doing here. That makes a logical sense. Red, red, yellow, blue. Yellow, blue. Oop. Oh, all right. That's not what I expected. You need to calculate? No problem. Um, I'm always up for this sort of collaboration in general because I believe that solving games like this are a collaborative measure. Uh, Infocom, back when they published text adventures, and Infocom... Ice is frozen water. Yes, thank you. Back when Infocom published text adventures, they published little pamphlets on, like how to solve them and one of the solutions that they always offered was bring a friend bring a few friends because many brain everybody's got some kind of specialty you know like some people are great at wordplay some people are great at math problems uh some people are just good at making cartoon leaps of logic hi that's me and when you get a bunch of brains in collaboration, all thinking together, some impressive things can happen. Means we've eliminated red entirely. Blue and yellow have to be the two correct ones. Yeah, that makes sense, judging from what I'm seeing. Like, the results didn't change when we added red to the mix. So... Yeah. Blue, green, yellow, green. Blue, green, yellow, green. Ah, that is two correct, one in the wrong place, and one missing. It's sweet, but it's also sensible. I'm always, uh, I'm, I'm just fascinated by how people solve puzzles. Well, I love watching people genuinely engage with, uh, with puzzly sort of content. Or they'd be in two. Um, don't know what you mean by that. Oh. The correct place is probably blue on bottom. Yellow is correct, but not in slot 
story. Yeah, I'm, I'm slowly trying to piece together, like... I'm seeing if I can solve it ahead of you, mentally. I'm probably not. But... Green, yellow, orange, blue. Alright. Green. Yellow. Orange. Blue. Green, yellow, orange. Yeah, just making positive. Because these colors are... Uh, that is... Are we in the wrong place? Yeah, so they're... Hmm. So what was correct? We can roll out orange, so the fourth is probably purple. Now you just need the order. I, I have strong suspicions that blue might be the top, but I am not 100% sure on that. I feel like I'm, feel like I'm playing Clue now. Ah yes, blue was the top here. With the candlestick in the study. If blue were top and yellow were anyone, we'd have two correct in the second try. That's valid. We have a space. Okay. Blue, green, purple, yellow. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure now, but... Oh-ho! Well, you're right at least about, uh... We just need the order. Green maybe at the bottom. I think green could be a lot of places. Green is everywhere. It's a golf course. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was terrible. Hmm. Two is a contradiction. I don't know that it is. Blue has to be two or three. Yellow is three confirmed. Green, purple, blue, yellow, green. Purple. Blue. Yellow. Green. That's it! Hmm, interesting. The moon in the sky was once heard to say. It's high time I saw this thing known as a day. Let's go. So the moon checked its clock and rose with the sun. And before long it realized just what it had done. It's far too bright here. I've made a mistake. What heat, what havoc the sun can create. I want to go back so when dusk came again. The moon rose when it should, said, ah, tis seven. So let's see, that is, um... Give me just a moment here. One, two... Four... Two, eight, two, seven. All right. Uh, you are quite welcome, Celine. That was pretty great for me, too. It's, it's nice to see how other people solve these things. All right, well, we've written down a sequence of numbers. I should actually write that down, actually, come to think of it. Using my actual pencil. I don't know what this means, but I'm sure we'll find out eventually. One, two, four, two. Eight. Two. Seven. 
And uh, now we have something to work on. We we can work on uh, under parring mini golf and winning a prize. Unfortunately, you know, we have a uh, failure scorecard. Blech. And let's, as our last act here, let's see what's over this bridge. Uh, there's a barn. Ripping. Yeah, I'm ripping my barn too. And there's a house. I'm sorry, what did that say? The Topham School for the Study and Development of Paranormal Powers. Hello? Over here, Miss Drew. Find the toy mouse and give it to Yuri, would you please? Otherwise, he'll just keep meowing. He hates strangers. Find a toy mouse and give it to Yuri? Okay. There it is. Oh, that's a nice mouse. Now, where's Yuri? Oh, Yuri doesn't look like he hates strangers. Yuri looks like he hates the pain of living. The agony of existence. I'm sorry, Yuri. <laughs> Here you go. Yeah, you're welcome. Oh, Yuri, I'm so sorry. Meh. Oh, Yuri, don't take it out on the mouth. <laughs> ah. All right, who's this asshole? How nice of you to drop by. And thank you for walking instead of parking in the driveway. I'm expecting a pupil. I'd hate for her to have to park on the road. Mr. Topham? Richard Topham at your service. What are you doing? What were you doing just now? I was in the process of trying to make these spoons move by using nothing but my own psychic energy. Have you ever focused sunlight through a magnifying glass until it was a minute yet searing point of light, Miss Drew? Uh, yeah, I guess. You see, that's what I do with my cerebral emanations, my thoughts. I focus them until they're a beam of pure energy which ultimately disrupts and transforms the molecular force field surrounding the target object. My entire ass you do, but okay. Is that what you teach people? Is that what you teach people in your school? How to beam their thoughts? I take them through exercises designed to help them increase their output of phantasmic energy. If you want to sign up for an introductory session, I believe I have an opening today. No, thank you. Oh. I'm afraid I'm busy, young lady. Far too busy to engage in idle conversation. You're not trying to hide something, are you, Mr. Topham? I'll be blunt, Miss Drew. I've discovered that the more time I spend with the, uh, shall we say, intellectually unendowed, the more my cerebral pulsations seem to diminish. I'm afraid I cannot speak to you further unless and until you prove that you are worthy. That is, that your brainwaves are not unacceptably inferior and thus deleterious to mine. This dude has his own Reddit. Like his own subreddit, you know? He's the only moderator. Well, it, we would if this wasn't 1930. My brainwaves are just fine, Mr. Topham. What I have here is an exercise in logic. If you can discern the correct solution, then I'll know that conversing with you will do me no psychic harm. You may take it with you. Oh, thanks. Good luck and good day. And that, I think, is where we will leave it for tonight. With Mr. Topham's... Brainwave tat. I want you were expecting Towers of Hannah. I would have rammed all of them directly up his asshole. Uh, I would show no mercy. We he would become the top tower.
So we're just gonna save here with, uh... Popham's bullshit. And we'll put up with that tomorrow night. For now, uh, thank you for stopping in. Uh, it, it does feel good to be back in, the, in Nancy Drew country. <laughs> I, I miss, I miss these games. I'm gonna... Am I really gonna? Yeah, I'm gonna swear, right here and now, that, um... Eventually, I'm gonna play through the entire set of them, and I will probably stream them here. Uh, I love these games so much. And, you know, I never finished uh, Danger by Design. I played about seven or eight of them. And I live blogged them, but I never finished out the complete set. And you know what? I don't own. Um, stay tuned for Danger. I'll have to find that one. It's always been the missing one. It always has. Maybe that'll be the next one I put up on the vote. I don't know. Oh, shit. Right. Speaking of voting, that is something you can do. Please observe these mysterious games. Uh, these games are all mysterious enough that I'm not going to describe them. You should vote with your heart and your soul and possibly your eyeballs, and also by typing exclamation point vote, a space, and a number. I'm just going to leave that there for a couple of minutes. Let you get folks, uh, try to decide what to vote. I don't know if it's a tie, I'm playing both games, right? Just making sure. Anyway. Uh, thank you for voting. And good night for now. <laughs>